your seat.
We are more ladies, make some noise. If you know you're excited to be at the We Are More Ladies Conference 2023, make some noise. I need you to get on your feet right now. Get on your feet, get on your feet. Tell your neighbor, give me space. Tell your neighbor, give me space. Are you ready to give God praise? Are you ready to give God praise? Come on now, let's go. We are more ladies right here. Make some noise for me. We are more ladies right here. Make some noise for me. We are more ladies right here. Make some noise for me. If you're ready for me, I'm ready for you. Let's go. Come on. Hey, get in the mood. Get in the mood. Let the Holy Ghost take control. Get in the mood. Get in the mood. Let the Holy Ghost take control. Get in the mood. Get in the mood. Let the Holy Ghost take control. Get in the mood. Get in the mood. Let the Holy Ghost take control. Come on. Get in the mood. Get in the mood. Let the Holy Ghost take control. Come on. Let the Holy Ghost take control. Come on. Just 
Just the drums, only the drums, just the drums, only the drums, just the drums, only the drums, just the drums. You the fill up, 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 only the drums, just the drums, only the drums, just the drums, on the keys, 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 let's go. Who be that guy when I say God no day? Who be that guy when I say God no day? Ah, you dey play, you dey play, you dey play. You know no say na God dey rain. You dey play, you dey play. You know no say na God dey rain. Come on. We are born ladies, make some noise. I was glad when they said, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Is somebody excited? to sing with me because I will say if God before me me and the one that will be that we go walk on show in my soul they never will see they never tell them say cause I go touch you say no me go away see no me go fight and no me go bust the bat you if God before me if God before me let's go come on now come on now make some noise Say, 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 me and the one that will be down. We will walk on show in muscle. They never wait in. They never tell her. Say, first time go down to you. Let me be go wait in. Let me be go fight and let me be go pass the punch. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Come on now. Let me see you move your body now. Let me see you move your body now. Let me see you move your body now. of God. That the grace of God they run out for us. Let it run out for you. Let it run out for you. All right now. Let me see you. Bring your groove on. Now. Put on your dancing shoe. 
the first time we were just rehearsing, it's about to get hot in here. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Let's go. One, two, three. Practicalize this, okay? Now, we have more ladies over here. Are you ready for me? Over here, are you ready for me? Now, make it as loud as you can. Uh. One, two.
Backup singers, right now. Are you guys ready? Now, with the instruments, I'd like you to sing with me. Are you ready? I cannot do this without you people. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. One, two, three, go. Aha. Amarachi. 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 Before 
Amen. Yeah. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he's alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. My God is alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he's alive. Is your God alive?
Ramakoto Bali Brigade. He will never be forever. He's not a man that he should lie, not the son of man that he should repent. I serve a God who never fails. I serve a God. He has never failed. I serve a God who never fails. Jesus never fails. My daddy never fails. Forever. Amen. Jesus. Can you declare it this morning? Amen. Jesus never fails.
lift up your hands, everyone. Do not let me go. to the harvest. Tell another neighbor, welcome to the harvest. The Lord is here to meet with you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. That was such a powerful worship. Thank you so much. Celebrate the choir. Praise God. Praise God. My name is Laurel and I'm going to give you vital information. Celebrate God. Hallelujah. First off, I'd like to welcome everyone here present. You can clap for yourselves. Welcome, welcome. You made it. Despite all the odds, you are here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to We Are More Ladies Conference 2023. Yes, and I'm so glad you made it. I'd like to thank you for coming. And all those watching online, you're not left out. Thank you so much for clicking that link, for staying tuned, for getting data. And you're here live with us too. Every minister of God here present, we recognize you, we love you, we honor you, and we thank you so much for coming. Put a round of applause together for yourselves. Yep. Yes, moving forward, I'd like you to know that registration for this program is compulsory. So if you are here and you haven't registered, please do so. The registration stand is just outside the auditorium to the right. You just see them there. They are ready to take your details. So registration is absolutely compulsory. We'd like to have your data to know how to reach out to you further. So please do well to register. If you haven't do so and registration is free it is totally free so just if you are confused it is just outside this door do well to do so and god bless you in the name of jesus we have very special and intentional lineup of events specially for you nothing here is a charade nothing here is coincidental everything is intentional and i'd like you to know that you can meet with god during the course of this program anytime it could be it could have been during the praise it could be right now it could be during special ministration but god is definitely going to meet with you and i would like you to know that every activity is filled with fun and fact and full of faith to edify you we have games we have drama electrifying worship and three powerful word sessions i thought you celebrate yeah so please, I beg you, I beg you in God's name, do not get distracted. Stay tuned, sit tight, because it's going to be an awesome ride. And we care so much about your convenience. So we have three restrooms. If you are pressed or you'd like to relieve yourself in any way, just make use of the restrooms. We have ushers at the aisle. They will definitely direct you to where the restrooms are. I have one at my left, one at my far left, and another at my right. So... Do well to use them. Um, we have a provision for children because we care so much about your concentration during the course of this meeting. And I would like you to know that our children teachers are trained, they are spirit filled, very ready to care for your children or your child. So no child is allowed into this auditorium. If you have your children with you, kindly take them out. Or if they are around the venue, you don't know where to keep them. We have children church located. Just once you come into the hall, at the right, there's a door. 
just go in that direction. If you cannot find it, just ask anyone wearing the pink polo and they will direct you to where it is. We're ready. We're ready to take care of the children so you will not be distracted. Don't be afraid. You have to register your child so that there won't be any mix-up, okay? So if you have your children around the venue, kindly take them to the children's church. Also, we have the Winlow's Books for Sale. Scripture says, buy the truth, but sell it not. We have these books available for you. We have um, Marry the Right Way, written by the Winlow's. It's going to richly bless you. We have Sex and Sense. What a powerful combination. So please, if you want sense when it comes to sex, please, you have to do well to buy this book. And here we have Refresh. It's a daily journal to help your prayer life and help you stay connected with the Lord. Each of these books, they're going for a very, very meager amount. You know, we need you to have them. So Marry Right is going for three, sorry, Marry the Right Way, yes, is going for 3,000 naira. Sex and Sense is going for 2,000 naira, while the prayer journal called Refresh is going for just 1,000 naira. Do yourself a favor. Get one for yourself. Get one for a friend. Get one for your entire community because the word of the Lord has to go around. Amen. Um, like I said before, we do not have any intention of leaving you stranded here in this conference. So please, at the entrance of church, we have our resource centers. Ladies equipped to answer every question you have. So if you have any question, just feel free. You can just march up to them and table your request and they are ready and ready to serve you. Amen. So that is the vital information. Can you celebrate God? I hope everyone understands. Yes, yes, yes. So the harvest is here and God is definitely going to meet you at the point of our needs. Moving forward, we have gains. Celebrate Jesus because... Yeah, we have gathered young people, and so, like I said, nothing is carnal about this meeting. So even the game session, God can still meet you. And I won't be doing the game session alone. I have my sister, very beautiful. Where is Ungozi? Ungozi, please. Celebrate Ungozi with me. Welcome. Please, um, technical, Ngozi needs a microphone, so you could just get her one up here. It's a very simple game, and before she comes to give us the rules and everything, or you just go ahead and give us the rules. Okay. You have, um, look at your seat. If you know you have been divinely selected to participate in this game, <laughs> around your seat, just where your back is resting, just look towards the edge. You will see a sticker. Yes, can you find, if you can find it, can you jump up? And if you are up there, just under your seat, you will see one. If you have been divinely selected, can you jump up on your feet? Okay, I just got now that on the sticker, H is written. So, Ngozi, can you take us further? Have you found it? Okay, so the first 10 of you to get on this stage will be playing. So your time starts now. Come up, come up, come up. Celebrate them as they walk up. The first 10. Okay, we have five here. I'm so sorry. Oh, she's so happy. Why? Okay, if you didn't make it out on time, do well to cheer them on. You are still a part of the game. Everyone is a part of the game. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you're happy to be here, can you just make a sound? Okay, please. Um, you guys are going to be both the judge and the ginger of this game. So the name of this game is called Charades. And we have 10 persons here. And we're going to group them in two. So we have team one. That This is team one and team two. So from this, side, from this side of the audience down, you guys are going to be cheering team one. And this side, you guys are going to be cheering team two. So if, I shall, if they are winning, please just and, and ginger them, okay? Do we get that? Team one, get out. You have some ginger. Team one. 
Ask him to. Please don't panic. Don't panic. Don't be tense. Jesus loves you. <laughs> Tell them to calm down. Say, calm down. calm down. You are in church, so don't worry. No matter what will happen here today, Jesus is still Lord. Okay, so if your paper had team one, just come here. If your paper had team two, just stay here. You get it? Okay, so we do not have much time. So the name of this game is called Charade. And what it means is that somebody is going to demonstrate something. And it is the duty of the rest of the members to guess it correctly. So why I said you guys are the judge and the ginger, meaning that you guys are going to judge them because you can see their you know, demonstration. So I'm just going to give a quick demo of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to demonstrate something. And when I'm done, I'm going to use 10 seconds to demonstrate it. And you guys are going to tell me what I just demonstrated. Can we go? Yes, yes. Can we go? Yes. Did we get that? So driving the car, do we get the game now? So they are going to describe something, and you guys are going to judge them. So, yeah, starting from. Okay, so let me just make one thing clear. Don't show anybody. Don't show anybody your team. Your team members will be the one to correctly guess what you are gesticulating. Exactly. Do you understand? So if she picks something, you don't have to see the card, she will gesticulate it. And it is your responsibility to correctly guess what she's gesticulating. If you get it correctly, you have a point. Right? So no expo from you people, please. No expo. Okay? All right. Okay, um, wait, before you start, we have 30 seconds each. So see the time at the back. So you guys have 30 seconds to demonstrate and guess. So. Paddling a canoe. Paddling a canoe. You have your point. <laughs> Dun, 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 Can dun. we go? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Media, are you ready? Timer. 30 seconds. You can do it. Go. No expo. No expo. She's dressing up. She's dressing up. Dressing, dressing up. up. Okay. I'm not feeling your ginger, you guys. Cheer them better. Thank you. Okay, next. Choose another one. Make sure nobody sees it. Nobody. No, none of your team members see it. Did you get it? Come forward. Ready. Man of God. Media, are you ready? All right. Go. Let them also see what you're doing. No expo. Make up. Make up. That's if this my game is too simple. Oh. <laughs> Applying makeup. Make sure All right, let's go. Add some energy. He's eating. He's eating. Is he eating, Gazi? No. Okay, he's not eating. What is he doing? 17 seconds. This drinking water. Drinking. drinking water. Is he drinking water? No. He's not drinking water. What is he doing? Okay, somebody is oh, going to chill. Chewing food. Is he chewing food? No. Ha what are you doing, guy? <laughs> Two, you guys are close, one, but something is missing. Time up. 
I'm sorry you lost your point. Okay, he was very, she was very close. The answer is actually feeding a baby food. Ah. Do you know if he's a baby? He was feeding himself. I show you a baby. A Jesus baby. Okay. No, there's no time. There's no time. He was feeding himself when the cat said feeding a baby. Nobody got it. Are you a baby boy? And <laughs> um, hope you guys are keeping scores. Okay, we don't have much time. Next person. Make sure nobody. Look forward, look forward, forward, man of God. Okay? He's ready. Oh, yeah, he's ready. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> what is he doing? Cradling a baby. Cradling a baby. Is he cradling a baby? Any other one? Cuddling a baby. Cuddling a baby. Is he cuddling a baby? Rocking a baby to sleep. So they got it. The chair leading from this side, eh? Like, I like it's something else. else. What is you will be for chair your guys now? You my team, I don't care. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Thirty seconds. Second. Say, eh? Hiccup. 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 Is she hiccuping? Is she hiccuping? <laughs> I don't like the fact that my game is too simple. Okay, the answer is having the hiccup. So yeah, she got, got it. it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What's that? Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, come on. Let nobody see what you got. Let's oh, yeah. Man of God, look ahead. <laughs> to the hills. <laughs> okay, go that way, man. Alright. Okay. Don't <laughs> What happened? Okay, she just slipped. She slipped. Did she sleep? Very close. Okay. Add more. You're not doing it properly. Very way. well. You are sleeping, but it's not only sleep that is there. You guys, walking give and then she slept. Walking and then she slept. Eh, very close. I mean, sleep. Sorry. About to sleep or? or... Is it about to sleep? Ah, uh, you are very close. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two, one. Bro. Ah. Did she just sleep? The answer is sleeping on a banana peel. It's the game, it's the game, it's the game. It's the game. I'm so sorry. Please, please, please. Okay, the next lesson is on. They are sorry. Hmm? Very close, very close. Praying in tongues. She said praying in tongues. And God, what is she doing? Speaking in tongues. Yeah. I'm thinking of the sides to join. The, Should I join you both sides? I'm even me. I'm thinking now. Me or because Kubishashi. who is winning? Oh. Who is winning? Oh. 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 <laughs> Have you peaked? Okay. Uh, one minute. Yeah. Has, has everybody done this? Okay. Go. Okay. We don't have time. Sharp, 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 sharp. Time. Can you turn let them see what you are doing? So what is she doing? Oh yeah, do it, do it, do it. To be overwhelmed. Wait, okay. Can you celebrate? Yeah. Welcome, okay. sir. Welcome, ma. Okay, media, please take it back to 15 seconds. All right. Okay, can you do what you were doing? Yeah, 
She's falling in love. She's falling in love. She's excited about something. She's excited. She's crying. She's crying, Ke. <laughs> Wait. Ngozi, what is she doing? She's falling in love. So know somebody in love, they must be doing like this. You get it now? Okay, my sister. So we have the last person. All right, 30 seconds, go. She's groaning. She's groaning in the secret place. So she's feeling stomach pain. She's feeling stomach pain, she's feeling stomach pain. No idea. No idea. She's doing press up. She's doing press up. She's pushing. She's pushing. She's in labor. She's in labor. What is she? Where are you? A baby. She's pushing a baby. She's pushing a baby. Look at what is she doing? Oh, time up. But what was she doing, Sha? What were you doing? Okay. She's delivering a child. Okay, media, do we have the scores? So this is the time to cheer your team, the winning team. That is the one I'm joining, though. Media, are you ready? Shift, 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 shift. We need the scores. What happened? Winner, 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 winner. Who's the winner? Who's the winner? People should cheer for Media. Yes, 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 yes. Almost there, almost there. Drum rolls. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh -uh, the tension is getting worse, sir. Are you ready? <laughs> you guys should relax. Like you're looking so tense. Okay. Can you move a little, please? Okay, yes. So, team one had five points. And team two had four points. Okay, they said it's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> Our time is up. Please, let's check him one. Thank you, People should check him one now. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Was that exciting? Can you put your hands together for the winners? Put your hands together for the winners. Wow. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Can you celebrate Jesus one more time? While we were at that game, our Reverend Ohis, Ojekere, and Pastor only walked in. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Welcome, sir. Welcome, ma. Wow. Amen. You may be seated. Moving on, we have song ministration by Athena. And after that, we have the drama ministration. So please sit tight. God is set to do amazing things today. Amen.
Okay, that's fine. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. My name is Athena, and I will be singing for you. Uh, so I was singing in my shop, and I believe in one of the three songs I'd be mashing up, well, one of the two, it's meant for someone here. So please listen and be blessed. All right. In the stillness of my soul Is a loud cry to you Before you I stand Helpless Vulnerable Unworthy is my state But your love said to me His love said to you Child, be bold and come And you said, Father Here I am Garani Ayesuna Garani Masoina, my lover, here I am. Garani Mayesuna. Garani. I can come. And then he said, I should tell you. See, fear is not your future. God is. Sickness is not your story. God is. Heartbreak is not the end. God is. Death is not the end. God is. All right, sing it. Let me hear you. So fear. See, sing it up to your father. Let him hear you. And what of sickness? And and so what of heartbreak? Is is heartbreak your your story? And what about death? Is, is death the end? Is death the end? And so he said, I should tell you. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. That's his promise to you. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's... Who is the new horizon for? Is it for me or is it for you? All right, hello, love. Hello, oh. hello, strength. Hello, strength. Hello, hope is new. All right. So this last part, see, no matter what you're going through, when you hype up your daddy, he will rise up for you. Right? When you hype up the king of glory, he will rise up for you, wouldn't he? And we're going to do that right now. And so this one says, Hail the Lion of Judah. Are you ready? All right, come on up. Let's raise this up a bit. Let's bring down the presence of our Father. And so we will the Lion of Judah. And so we will raise the... Who are we going to help? We're going to help, we're going to help, we're going to help, we're going to help, we're going to help. And we will help, and we will help our daddy. Our daddy is about to send. We're gonna help. We're gonna help. And we're gonna help our father, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. We're gonna help. We're gonna help. We're gonna help. We're gonna help. Come on, let's help him now. Let's help him now. We're gonna help. In struggles, in 
trials and temptations. We're gonna heal our daddy. We're gonna heal the line of Judah. We're gonna heal them. We're gonna heal. And we will heal the line of Judah. We will heal. And so remember, fear is not your future. And what about what about sickness? Sickness is not your story. I want to buy heartbreak. It's heartbreak the end. Heartbreak. Heartbreak is not your home. And then what about death? What about death? Death is not the end. And then you will sing to your father. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. That is your testimony. Hello, strength. Hello, it's a new ride. Hello, peace. Hello, peace. Come on now. Hello. Hello. Hello, Lord. Hello, strength. Hello, it's a new world. And one more time. We're gone here. What are we gonna help? What are we gonna help? We will. Miami. 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 Who is the line of Judah to you? Are you not going to help your father? You're gonna help, you're gonna help. And we will help the one who is come. We're gonna help the Jesus that is riding on the cloud. amazing crowd. Good morning everybody. Welcome to the harvest. Who is excited to be here? You can make a better sound if you are excited. Who is excited? Come on, make a noise. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, the choirs, you guys are amazing. The ushers, your outfit is something else. Oh, the protocol. Just look at how they are standing. So amazing. Thank you, the windows. Thank you for this privilege. I'm grateful. So, let's move down to the business of the day. So, for those of you who do not know me, I am Dr. Ikeli. I mean, Dr. Mrs. Peters Ikeli. You can do better if you are clapping for me. Thank you, thank you. And as you all know, the first human neurosurgeon in Nigeria. Isn't that amazing? You know, a lot of ladies, they come to me, they ask me questions like, ah, oh, ma, I love how you carry yourself. I love the way you act. I love the so much you're doing. I love your boldness. I love how you just are. I want to be like you. And I'm like, well, everybody likes success. Everybody enjoy the success story. But most times, we do not know the story behind the success. So this morning, I'm going to be taking you through my own success story. So stay with me. Mama, Papa, you know, would have been a very wonderful family. Me, Mama, John, and Father. But you know, my father, he died when I was barely two years old. 
So, what is the family without a father? And, you know, three years later, I, yes, exactly three years after Papa's death, my mother fell ill and she has been in the hospital for the past 19 years. You know, I am a believer. I pray. It's not, I pray. I, I, I serve him. I serve him in the altar. I, I serve in the choir. But why has he been unfaithful to me? And just that night, that night, I went to church. <laughs> I, I, I went to church. I, I wanted to seek his face. I just wanted to pray so that Mama would be well, so that I would just be well, so that she would stand up from that sick bed. And in the church, after prayers, I went to my house. I went to my house, and, and there were robbers. There were robbers in the house, and they forced John, my only brother, my only brother, to defile me. I was raped by my own brother, but God was watching, right? He is, he is watching. I got pregnant, pregnant by my own brother, and I should. Did his word not say that whatever we ask in his name, he's going to do it? Of course, I have prayed, so why hasn't it answer? I committed abortions. Yeah, I committed abortion. How, how will it be that a, a lady got pregnant for her own brother? I killed him. I committed abortion. I committed abortion. I think that was not enough. My academics. It was nothing to write home about. It was nothing. 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 Since everything was not working, besides, Mama died two years after my rape. I, I should just end it all. John is dead, there is no father, there is nobody, and my academics are failing, so I should kill myself, right? Suicide, or oh, drugs, drugs, the only place I find solace is in drugs, that's the only place I find solace, <laughs> whenever I'm not drugs, Suicide. I think suicide. Suicide. I should kill myself. I should. I should. I should commit suicide. Maybe when I end it all, then I'll go and be with Mama. I'll be with Papa, and we'll all be one happy family. I should end it all. I should. I should end it all. I should. Right? I should end it all. Of course, I'll be justified if I kill myself. I will. Nothing is working. Suicide. My brother is dead. My father is dead. <laughs> Academics. Nothing is working. I am a total failure. <laughs> <laughs> I should, I should. <laughs> I cannot even kill myself. I can't. <laughs> and God said. Let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. <laughs> I was made in his image. For his thoughts towards me, of good and not of evil, to give me an expected end. And for the weapons of our warfare, they are not scanned, but I made my true God for the pulling down of strongholds. Ah, come boldly before the throne of grace. You may find help in time of need. Asha. Can you help me? Jesus, I am tired. His word, he said it that he said it. That I should come boldly. 
my sins are forgiven. They are both shut. He's writing them off. No matter how filthy I am, he's cleaning them. <laughs> and this is not me. This isn't me no more. You know, that is my story. A girl who was a victim of rape. I was raped by my own brother. Many things were not working in my academics. Everything was a total failure. And you know, my story mirrors many of your stories. It might not be the exact same thing, but you know, definitely, we all are faced with trials and temptation. So it is important that you know that the story, these things you are going to is God making something beautiful out of your life. So do not stay down there because this morning he beckons on you. Come, come, come. Because he will make your life beautiful. Thank you. Can somebody celebrate Jesus? Like I said before, God can meet you at any point in this conference. That was a beautiful ministration. Praise God. Please, it's time for announcement, and I implore you to listen with rapt attention. Praise God. We are convinced that after this program, a lot of people will give their lives to Christ and souls will be won and lives restored. So to this effect, if you give your life to Christ during the course of this meeting, please, we care about you. And a sleep will be given to you. Please put in your correct details so we can reach out to you and follow up on you, on your Christian faith, talk more with you and pray with you. So if you are here and you give your life to Christ during the course of this program, please, when the sleep is given to you, please fill in your correct details and God will richly bless you. Secondly, we are very sure that the power of, power of God Lord is here and he's going to move mightily. So we know that there will be an avalanche of testimonies. Definitely the Lord will fill everyone here with testimonies. And one thing is that we like to recount the acts of God. We like to keep records. We like to know what God has done for you. So if you receive your testimony even now, and then we are also sure that after the conference, those online and when you go back to your houses, you could also know that the Lord really touched you. We would like to receive your testimony. And please, you can send it to the address, email address, and the WhatsApp phone number that will be displayed on the screen. But I will read it out so you can do well to write it down. You can send your testimonies to weareMoreLadies at gmail.com. WeAreMoreLadies at gmail.com. Or you can send it to the WhatsApp number 0814-271-5423. 0814-271-5423. And we're expecting your testimonies. Amen. Um, sermons from today's conference, past BFC and even the very first edition of We Are More Ladies Conference and a lot of other sermons that will edify you are available for free download on our Telegram channel. So it is very easy to access this material. Once you have your Telegram app, I implore you to join. And by joining, you have to type in the windlows slash the voltage center. Just put it in the search bar and it will give it to you. you just join and then you can have access to all our sermons and your life will be richly blessed we do not have any plan of leaving you stranded and so this program on behalf of our chief host she has made accommodation available so if you come from places that are far within Edo State or outside Edo State and you cannot make it back to your abode today we have a plan for you accommodation is available so at the end of service just stay at my right side the green seats to be specific and somebody the coordinator in charge of 
accommodation will meet with you and give you all the details you need to know and take very good care of you. Yes, moving on, we have transportation available. You know, this is, um, this is way out of town, and so we also do not want you to be stranded. So accommodation is available, and now transportation is available. There will be buses, free buses, outside this venue to convey you back to where you came from. We have buses going to Ring Road, we have buses going to Ekeon Campus, and we have buses going to Dawson. So please, if this is on your path or you live around that area, after the service, just go outside and go around where the buses are. Please comply with the logistic officials. They will tell you how to board and how to make use of the provision, and the Lord will richly bless you. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Yes. As you are well aware, Refresh did not hold for this month because this is a conference holding today. And Refresh is our non-denominational prayer meeting. It's going to be happening in the month of July. So you have to prepare. You have to get ready. After today, you will meet with us again next month for another infilling of the Holy Ghost. Refresh holds every last Saturday of every month at the Civic Center, and that is at 79 Airport Road beside Benoni Junction, and the time is 8 a.m. We have our pastor, Aunli Ojekere, ministering. I thought you'd be even happier. Yeah, she's ministering. And we have music ministration by Reverend Tony Ritchie. We have it special for you. It's so packed. It's so, so packed. To this effect, if you want to volunteer, you know, you're not the type of person that just likes to sit down. You want to work and you want to volunteer for a refresh. Please, you can go to the registration stand. We have officials there that will tell you all you need to know. They will take your details and inform you of our subsequent meetings if you want to volunteer and be a part of refresh. If you also want to partner with We Are More Ladies Conference, and we refresh financially you know maybe you are not around or you you really want to allow your seed speak we you are very very much welcome and please the details of the account will be displayed on the screen we have you in mind and so wherever you are if you can't make it down here physically you can as well transfer something and the lord will richly bless you in the name of jesus Yes, you may also be wondering, what is W-A-M-L? WAM, what is that? Who are these people wearing pink and black everywhere, taking over Benin City? So this is We Are More Ladies. I thought you would celebrate. Yes, you have to know. It is an interdenominational ministry and we host a conference yearly under the leadership of Pastor Anwili Ojekere. Yeah. So it is open. It is a very big field and every laborer is important. If you want to partner, you want to work with us, you want to also be a member of We Are More Ladies Interdenominational Ministry, you can go to the information desk and we'll give you all the details you need to know. Or you can reach out to Tori on 0814-2715-423. I'll take it again. 0814-2715-423. She will let you know all that you need to be a member. And also, like I said previously, We Are More Leagues organization is under the leadership of Pastor Anwili Ojekere. And she is the co-presiding pastor of a young, vibrant, and fast-growing ministry called the Voltage Church. Voltageians, can you shout? Yeah. It is a church in Benin City, and she co-pastors with her husband, the Reverend Ohis Ojekere. The Voltage is acronym for the voice of this age, just in case you think it's talking about electricity. Is not. We can shock, but then it is also an acronym for the voice of this age. Under the leadership of Reverend Ohis and Pastor Amulio Jekere, the church is family-oriented, so it is wide enough 
for every one of you to come in and be a member of that great family. So we look forward to seeing you in church. We're already expecting you. <laughs> and the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Our services hold every Sunday. We have three services. And first service is for 7 a.m. Second service, 8.30 a.m. Third service, 10 a.m. It is located at 144 Airport Road, opposite DVD filling station, beside INEC office, just before Ogba Zoo. So it is easy to locate. We're expecting you. And we shall see you in Jesus' name. Also, if you are thinking that the church is just too far out of town, we have you in mind. We will not leave you stranded. We have free buses available to convey you to church and back. Ah, won't you be happy about that? So don't worry, we're thinking about you. And this transport system functions in Ugbo Axis and Ekenwan Axis. So if you are within these locations, please take advantage. For the bus at Ekenwan, it's at Ekenwan campus in front of the girls' hostel. For Ugbo campus, it is in front of this Uniben small gate by 7.45 a.m. every Sunday morning. So please take advantage of that. For counseling and deliverance with Pastor Amuli, if you want to meet with her, you want to talk with her, tell her more details about your life, or you just want direction, she's very available to see you. Please, you can make inquiries at the inquiry desk just outside, and you can book an appointment because without an appointment, you may not be able to see her. So you can book an appointment, and the meeting day is Tuesday by 9 a.m. at the Voltage Church for purposes best known to me i would like to repeat it again voltage church is at 144 airport road opposite dvd filling station beside INEC office before Ogba zoo so please you can book an appointment and you'll be reached out to when to come follow us on all our social media platforms if you want to keep abreast of all our activities, conferences, meetings, you want to know firsthand what is going on with the Voltage, the Winlows, we are more ladies, please follow us on Facebook at the Winlows and the Voltage. On Instagram, the Winlows and we are the Voltage. On Twitter, the Winlows and the Voltage Church. On YouTube, the Winlows and the Voltage. On Instagram, we are more ladies. Thank you so much for listening and God bless you. Can you celebrate Jesus? <laughs> celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus, somebody. So, yes. We're here and it is time to give back to God because he first gave unto us his son willingly. So now if you have a seed in your pocket, in your bag, it's time to harvest it. Bring it out, bring it out. And it is time to give unto God offerings. So you can reach out to where your money is. And if you are giving electronically, the details will be displayed on the screen. So you can transfer your money. If you are watching online, just watch your screen. The details are there. So we are ready to receive and give God back because he has first given unto us. If you have brought out your offerings, please, can you be upstanding? Thank you very much. Be upstanding. We have to honor the Lord with the seed because he has first given unto us. Can you lift up your offerings far above your head in, as a sign of surrenderance to the Lord? Thank you, Jesus, for these ones. We give you back our lives, we give you back our seeds, we give you back a token out of the abundance you have blessed us with. We give you all the glory and we thank you indeed in the name of Jesus. Somebody make a joyful noise. Yes. Can you give Jesus praise? Put us in together for Jesus. You celebrate Jesus in this place. Hey, hey. your love has taken over me, Father. I depend on you. I have confidence in you, in you oh Lord. I put my trust. Your love has taken over me, Father. Oh yes, you call on me.
that says we shall not be few so congratulations to those that came with their vessels to those that came with their harvesting tools because laborers shall be recruited in this meeting we have intentionally prepared the list of the ministers that will be blessing you so it is not coincidence there's nothing carnal about it and just to let you know who they are and what they do, I will be reading a brief citation to warm you up and help you receive our speakers. Amen. First, we have with us Laju Iren. Yes. Who is a best selling author, book writing coach stellar filmmaker mother and the resident pastor 
of Celebration Church International, Ikeja. She has reached millions of people across the country with inspiring stories, creativity told, and she spends her days purposefully loving God and her family. We also have with us a powerful songwriter and psalmist who was born into a Muslim background until 2010 when she answered the call of God. Her name is Minister Abby Ojomu, and she is the convener of the Glory of God Conference and Kavar, the waiting room. Somebody celebrate. Popularly called the Winlows, or Mr. Winlows, another minister we have here present is Ohis Muiwa Ojekere. Yeah. Who is a force to reckon with in the gospel media industry? Aside from being an award-winning filmmaker, he is the author. He is also a counselor and the lead pastor of the Voltage Church, alongside his beautiful wife, Pastor Anwili Ojekere. Next, we have Anwili Ojekere, who is an actress. A counselor, an author, and a mother with a burning passion for people, particularly ladies and women. This minister holds a monthly interdenominational prayer meeting called Refresh, and she is the convener of the annual We Are More Ladies Conference with the vision to birth women who are life givers. Ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation. Can you celebrate Pastor Anwilio Jakeri? Can you make it louder? Somebody celebrate! Don't stop shouting! Welcome, welcome, welcome! Amen. If that was for me, that's okay. But can you now celebrate the King of Kings? Can you celebrate the Lion of the Tribe of Judah? Can you celebrate Yahweh, the God that makes all things possible? Can you celebrate the God who is, who was, and who will, who is to come? Abundantly able to meet your needs, and you celebrate the miracle walking father. And still in this posture, can you lift up your hands and begin to bask in the Holy Ghost? Come on, worship the name of the Lord in a few seconds. Can you just speak in tongues? <laughs> Come on, lift up your hands and just worship him. Come on, lift up your hands and worship him in few seconds. I don't know how much you want to be positioned this morning. To drink of him but you want to say this morning the lord can you do unto me what only you can do and take all the glory i give you a few seconds to position your hearts to the one that is the one that will the one that is able to pour into our flesh he's ready to pour into all empty vessels this day and you lift up your hands and just worship him and say, Lord, do unto me what only you can do. And take all the glory this morning. Mm. 
mighty wind Spirit of the harvest Cover us with your wings Blow, blow Blow like a mighty wind Spirit of healing Cover us with your wings Blow, blow Blow like a mighty wind Spirit of deliverance Cover us with your wings We have come to you for an encounter we have come to you for healing. We have come to you. Lord, breathe upon us. Blow, blow. For me. Blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of deliverance. Cover us with your wings. Spirit of the harvest, cover us with your wings. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of healing, cover us with your wings. I am a man, 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 Ela babulo no Shana na miela Ela lila la lila babanda Shana ni la lila la la Ala baba miela Ala baba na 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 Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Silence. Everyone, lift up your hands. Can you help me on my strings better? I'm not feeling it. Everyone, lift up your hands. Everyone. Silence. This is a day that men will remember for good. It is a memorable day Cause I'll pour all of myself On vessels that will be empty It is a day that I Will feel flesh Will feel the ones that are thirsty Creating your hearts expectations because this is a new season that is upon you great in your heart rooms that will be enough to take in all of my pouring this morning 
creating your heart testiness because I will fall on you and you will drink and drink and drink. To confirm my words, I just want to anoint a few set of people. Oh, well, I don't mind. It is just to confirm the things that I want to do. It's just to confirm what this conference is about. This is just the beginning of the great and mighty things I will do. So create in your heart water pots so I can feel. Do not take away. Take away every form of conventionalism that you may have in your heart. Because I am the God that does no cliche. I will break in strange moves. I will break in strange art. There is a lady in the gallery, make no mistake. I am not the god of cliches. I will do strange acts and moves in this place. Oh, Alaba in the eyes, Allah. There are ten angels already positioned in this auditorium, Alabai. And they came with tanks of oil. It's not cups, it's tanks. Ten, ten, there are ten angels. And to confirm this, there is going to be an outburst from the gallery. To the left and to the right. There is an outburst. Yes, there is an outburst. Ten angels, they are carrying tanks of oil. Yes, I am ready to launch my people into depths beyond their comprehension. It is a new season in the city of Benin and beyond. I will announce empty vessels. I will make names, household names. I will do what only me will do. And I, I will glorify myself in this garden. For I am the Lord and I will do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you can ever imagine. I am God. I will heal the sick today. I will cause forth deliverance. It is a new season of emergence. You've asked for gifts and I will give you. Position yourself, my people. Position yourself, my people. For the day has been set aside. For the things that I will do, position yourself, my people. Position yourself, my people. Men will drink, men will drink, men will drink. They will drink from the depths of my well. Men will drink. I have come that you may have life and have life in abundance. I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. I am the living God. I am Yahweh. And I am ready to breathe, breathe upon empty vessels. I am ready. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, can you give the Lord a praise in this house? Come on, can you glorify? Can you lift up your hands to exalt the King of Kings, Yahweh, the God that has made this possible? Come on, give the Lord a shout this morning. You can do better than this. Come on, give the Lord a shout. You can make it louder. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Still standing, can you celebrate yourselves for making this possible? Is that how you celebrate yourselves? Mm. 
and now seize this opportunity to welcome you again to We Are More Ladies Conference 2023. Can I, your ladies, make a shout to the King of Kings? Hallelujah. Do take your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. 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 Celebrate the person sitting beside you. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word which we are about to receive this morning. Causing hearts a renewal, a transformation. Through your word, let there be encounters deposited in the hearts of men. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Minister Abel Jomo, um, Pastor Ladri, they are already in the city of Benin. And in no short time, they will be with us in the auditorium. Can you celebrate God for this? <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me celebrate my darling husband, Reverend Oiso Jekere. Amen. Amen. You'll be hearing him for the first time in We Are More Ladies Conference to minister to us and bless our life. Is that how you celebrate my husband? <laughs> it took a lot to have him minister today. It was a lot. But we bless God that he finally agreed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Can you celebrate all ministers? Please help me celebrate my mom in law. Pastor Tola Ochekere. <laughs> Amen. Ah, please help me celebrate her very well. Like, she was of you, Justice Stands, this period, making this conference a success. Please celebrate her very well. Amen. Amen. And help me celebrate all ministers present here, pastors, deacon, and all lights. God bless you for coming. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry that we don't have the names documented here because I would have loved to be specific about your names. But I do not think that we can really take everyone's name. So please, I'd like you to celebrate yourselves. And please celebrate. Help me celebrate every minute that present here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to teach this morning on what I have titled, The Laborer in the Harvest. The Laborer in the Harvest. Matthew 9, verse 35 to 38. Matthew 9, 35, 35, 3, 5, 35 to 30. If you don't know where Matthew is, can you say, God have mercy? Matthew 9, verse 35 to 38. 1, to 3, read. Can we read together? 1, to 3, go. About all cities and villages, teaching their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Third six. When he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Third seven. Then he said to his disciples, "Can you can you speak up when you get here? Can you can you repeat it?" Then he said, one, two, three, go, louder. Thirty-eight. All right, let's go back to 36. Just leave, leave my scripture on the screen, 35. Hallelujah. So I want to teach on the laborer in the harvest. The first thing two or three things I got from this scripture, or the first four things I got from this scripture is number one, not every child of God is a laborer. Not every child of God is a laborer. But every child of God should be a laborer. And that's why Jesus said, he says the harvest is plentiful. He said, he turned to his disciples and said, so I could imagine him turning. He had expectation. 
he had a passion in his heart in what he wanted to see in the vineyard. And he said, the laborers, harvest is plentiful, but laborers are few. So it is expected because it is the great commission that we should go into streets, go into cities, go into villages to win souls. It is not for a specific department. As long as you are a child of God, you belong to the evangelistic army. As long as you are a child of God, you belong to the evangelistic army. So the great commission was given to every child of God. So not every child of God is a laborer, but every child of God should be a laborer. That's number one. And no wonder in Luke 10 verse 2, repeatedly he said, Therefore he said to them, the harvest truly is great, the laborers are few. Therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the, into the harvest. He would not have said pray if it was not necessary. He would not have said pray if it was not expected. He would not have said pray if he wasn't given as a mandate to every child of God. So every child of God belongs to an evangelistic army. So it's not a departmental thing. While you may have an evangelism department in your church, it is not constrained to a department. It is commanded to all believers, all children of God. So you are meant to go out to win souls. And I don't mean just sharing pamphlets and flyers. That's not, I'm not talking about winning people to your church. I'm talking about winning souls, not members. They are two different things. Amen. Number two, the second thing I drew from the scripture is that seed sowing. Sowing of seed can be done by one or a few. But the harvest is done by many laborers. Number two, seed sowing can be done by one. But the harvest is done by many laborers. So in other words, a farmer, when he wants to sow, I mean, you all know that corn is in season, right? Who doesn't know? I don't know what you are leaving, man. Corn and pears, the real breakfast, lunch and dinner. It's just unfortunate that it doesn't come out in the morning. But if you, who loves corn and pear here? You like it roasted or you like it boiled? I like it too. I'm a fan of it too. Anyhow, even if I'm coughing roasted corn, I will eat it. Who cough? They do. Amen. So seed sowing. When you want to sow, I mean, I was, I mean, I, was, I, I, I did a, a, a bit of agriculture. And my dad was one time the commissioner of agri for Delta State. So at least I have an idea, even though my husband doesn't believe. I have an idea of what farming is like, you know. So, um, so I can speak on it a bit. So if you want to sow, if you want to plant seed of maize, you don't have to pull your community to do that. It's very easy. I can teach you for free. It's just for you to drop the seed of maize, you know, bury and, you know, it's that easy. But I've realized that harvesting is more work than sowing the seed. So sowing seeds can be done by few. You don't really need many. I remember when my great teacher there, we carry us to the farm. We are just few. We just drop it there. But we want to have this thing called yam. Hey, I used to form sickness then. So sowing of seed can be done by one or a few. But harvest is done by many laborers. Harvesting is done by many laborers. And you know the interesting thing? Until you know the few that God has asked you to do, you won't be ready for the harvest. Seed sowing can be done by a few, but harvesting is done by many laborers. No wonder in Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20, New King James Version, it says, Then eleven disciples went into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubled. 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. And on earth to go therefore so he had the seed but he needed the people because you can have the seed of the vision but you need structure and system to be able to implement and get the harvest you can have the seed as a CEO to run a company but you cannot run a company effectively without having people so he said go therefore so the authority was given to him the seed was given to him but you see, he needed to make disciples of nations. So go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. So the CEO has the seed where he commands men to do. So every time a seed sower does not have laborers, the work becomes
becomes frustrating. When it's, when, like I said before, when a farmer sows seed, when it's time for harvest, doesn't have the people, the work that is meant to be done in one day can do it for two weeks. And if Ken's not talking, the thing about harvest is when the crops are ready for harvest and you don't see that they are ready, even the corn, some things can begin to eat it. That I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even to the end. So Jesus had the see, the vision, but he needed men. Remember in Matthew, two, Matthew the, 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 the anchor scripture read, Matthew 9, verse 35 from 35, he said, he went about, he had healed, he had gone to different cities and everyone was healed. But yet, he said, harvest is plentiful. So there was still more. And that brings me to my third point. When the harvest is plentiful, more work needs to be done. And that's why when there is plenty, you don't get too excited because, and just relax. You see, coming into Indosport Complex today, as much as I was joyous in my spirit that everywhere was crowded, I told myself only there's more work to be done. Because every time there's an increase, there's more demand. So while you may be jumping and all of that, I was more emotional. I was like, God, what's the next thing you have me do with these people? Because every time there is plenty, there is more work. And that's why it is harvest is plentiful. If you notice, the equation was in balance. It says it's plentiful, but the laborers are few. So in other words, when the harvest is plentiful, you need more laborers. Because why? There is more work to be done. When you are faithful to the things of God, more work is given to you. I wonder if there's a retirement in God. So plenty brings more work. Work can be increased in opportunities. The harvest can be increased in opportunities. It can be increased in strategy. It can be increased in more knowledge. But every time there is an harvest, you would need to increase in your capacity. You will need to increase in your structuring. You will need to increase in your strategy. You will need to increase in your system. And that is why when a company is growing and the company tries to use the same system they used when they were small to do the big things, they will drain. Because when there is plenty, there is a room for re-strategizing. When there is plenty, there is a room for you to read more. If you have to read in the little measures you were reading before, you will be frustrated. And if possible, you will lose the attraction many have for you. Praise God. And number four, the fourth thing I drew out from here. Laborers are sent by God. Laborers are instructed by God. Laborers. Laboring is an instruction, not a condition. Laboring, if you are a child of God, you are a believer, laboring is an instruction, is not a condition. And so therefore, when you are sent, you do not have an option. When you are sent to go out into the field, you honestly don't have an option. Because laboring is an instruction, it's not a condition. Unfortunately, a lot of people have conditioned what they have been sent to do. Just like the story of Jonah. In Nineveh, if you go to Jonah chapter 1, very quickly, we don't have time. I don't have time. My time is almost up. Jonah chapter 1, you will see there, God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh because the people there had blasphemed. The people there had gone against God. And Jonah had, he conditioned his instruction. He conditioned what God asked him to do. Instead, he went out to tarnish. He paid, he changed it. He got fair, another fair, and entered a ship going to Tarshish rather. He was going to his own city. Why? Because many, when you are sent by God, your convenience is not a requirement. So it wasn't convenient for him to go to Nineveh. Because when you are sent, the truth is the work is real. It's not beans. When you are sent, it's not, there is nothing comfortable about God's instruction. I must tell you the truth. There is nothing comfortable about God's instruction. Resources will go. Your time will go. A lot of things will go. And that is why the selfless people who can stay with the sent message. So Jonah, it wasn't convenient. It was not conducive for him to go cry out to the people. In Nineveh, he had his reasons, which we will see very soon. So he had to go. He went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tashish. It was conducive for him. But you see, if you are truly a laborer, or you want to be sent by the Lord of
the harvest into his vineyard, your convenience is not a requirement. It's not a requirement. Who then are laborers? Who then are laborers? Number one, the first thing. Laborers are men and women who are restless until they fulfill the will of God. Who then are laborers? Laborers are men and women who are restless until they fulfill the goal, the assignment, or the will of the master. Laborers are men and women who are restless until they fulfill the goal or assignment or the will of the master. John 4 verse 34. Let's see very quickly in New King James Version. Jesus said to them, listen, watch this. Jesus said to them, my food. Let's go back to the preceding scripture. Verse 33. Verse 33. Media. Okay. Please, can you go back to verse 32? Sorry. 32. Let's start from 32. Sorry. 31. I'm so sorry. So, let me just give um, a summary of what happened there. So, Jesus finished. The Samaritan woman just, you know, had an encounter with Jesus. And so she left him and went to tell the cities, the villages, who she had seen. Come, come, can you come and see the man who told me about my story, my history? She ran out to go tell them. And as she ran out, the disciples, they were genuinely consigned. In the meantime, his disciples watched him and said, Rabbi, eat. Because he has been so busy. I mean, I mean, he, 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 before he knew it, he was having a, a conversation with a Samaritan woman. He had done all the miracles. If you check, if you, if, you, if you go through this John chapter 4. And now he was still there. I mean, this was an opportunity. It was break time. You know, many of us are so quick to have break time. Break time. Say your neighbor, break time. Break time. You're too quick to have break time. And so in the meantime, his disciples watched him saying, Rabbi, eat. 32, but he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Hmm. 33, therefore the disciples said to one another, has anyone, they, they were surprised. Because let me tell you something, when you understand the assignments, there are things that do not, they're not, they're not in your, there are things that are not priority to you. Why food can be a necessity, there is a major food that is more of a necessity. These four disciples said to wonder, has anyone brought him anything to eat? They were shocked because, I mean, they have seen the business of his day. So what is he talking about? Number 34. You know, when you carry a load, not only you really understand the weight of your load. Jesus said to them, my food. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Leave it there. And to finish his work. Walk. He didn't just say who sent because it doesn't end in sending, it ends in finishing. You can be sent and not finish it. Ah, come on, before you begin to process, ah, what if I die? Mm -mm. It's not, I'm not talking about premature death. There are people who have been sent but they have finished the work on time because they have retired, they have taken enough break time. You know that there are things you used to do, you were sent, you had dreams. You, you, you were given ideas by God. You were given clarity. But you see, you were too quick to take a break. Break can be probably because of lack of finance, lack of resources. Probably because you are just tired. You feel discouraged. Some people just get discouraged so easily. Some people are more people motivated than self-motivated. And if you need to do the work that God has sent you, you would have to be more self-motivated than people motivated. And I reiterate, if you need to do the work that God sent you, you will have to be more self-motivated, more than people motivated. I remember when I got married to my husband, he would say to me, I, will, I don't want you to be a woman who will just be in my kitchen. He will keep on sharing prophecy upon prophecy to me about what he has seen about my life. Can you celebrate a bridegroom in the person of Reverend Oisu Chikere? I can say this every time. That there are too many husbands but few bridegrooms. When you see one, appreciate him. Amen. I hope you don't clap and end up using your emotions to choose someone who is not ready to groom you. Amen. In the name of Shawama. Amen. Amen. He would keep on prophesying to me from the year we got married since 2013. 
we are 10 years in marriage. He will say, I'm really sweet. This is not you. I know what I saw about you before you come out. You can be this. You can be that. I don't want you to just be a cook in my kitchen. Oh, yes. Why well, I enjoy it and appreciate it. There is something more I appreciate about your life. He will keep on saying, but do you know until I saw, I didn't move. You see, when people push you, there is a limit to how far you can move. But when you push yourself, you can break every limit. Was I already doing in the name of submission? Yes, I will move a bit. But when I realized it for myself, self-realization produces outstanding results. When I realized it, when I became motivated by myself, I had to see. Because if you don't see, you can't move. He would prophesy, he would say, but until I became motivated by myself through God and in God, I didn't move far. So who are laborers? Laborers are not just people who are sent. They are people who finish. Many people can be sent. They talk about the dream. Say, Lord, you have talked too much about what God has asked you to do. Please, can you do something about it? I know that you are prophet so, so, and so. You see the mind of God in seasons, but you do nothing about it. Can you move, prophetess? I know that sometimes when you send text to people, you write CEO this, but there is no company in your name. Can you now move beyond the titles you have given yourself even when the actions don't commiserate the titles? I know you have written evangelist this and all the titles given to you. It's good. I celebrate you, title bearers. But please, the titles you are bearing, does it measure up? Is it equating the work that you are doing? So until you are not just sent, but you finish the work, you are not a laborer. Because you see, you can take so much break and you won't know when you are dying, but yet you are alive. The worst thing that can happen to someone is to be sent, but you don't know when people have passed you. Not just passed, when you do not even know when you are only sitting, but there is nothing happening to you. It is the worst death. So laborers are men and women. Who are restless until they fulfill the will. So my food is to do the will. Was he hungry? Oh yes, but there was a deeper hunger. I learned from this scripture that hunger has realms. Hunger has grade. Hunger has level. So was he hungry? Yes, he was hungry. But there was a more, a better hunger, a richer one. An insatiable hunger that was in him for him to reach out. You see, Burden bearers are laborers. People who carry the burden, they are restless. They are not looking for what you can call them. They are not looking for accolades. They are there. They are there in the rain. They are there in the sun. Until we get to the end of this, we are not quitting. When you have those kind of people in your team, you can go and sleep. They don't care. They don't work according to salary. They work according to heavenly reward. They don't work according to the pay that's been given to them. They go beyond the pay to do. Those are laborers, are burden bearers. They go beyond the wages because they know their capacity exceeds wages. Number two, laborers. Oh, let me just go to the scripture. Second Timothy 4 verse 6 to 8. Under laborers are men and women who are restless. Second Timothy 4, verse 6 to 8. For I'm already being poured out. This is Paul talking. Oh, this was Paul's statement. Second Timothy 4, verse 6. For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure, laborers pour all of themselves. They become an offering. So Paul speaking, he says, I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have 
finished the race. I have kept the faith. Are you seeing the statement? I have fought the good. It is the word fight because listen, when you are truly a laborer, you will fight. You will fight comfort. You will fight a lot of distractions. You will fight things around you. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Eight. It says, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous. So in other words, when you finish your walk, there is a crown that awaits you. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So when laborers are not just sent and they finish the work, there is a crown. The laborer must know that they must present themselves as an offering. You present yourself as a living sacrifice. When you walk on the road, you tell yourself every day, I am an offering sent by God. So you don't just give offering, you become the offering. Number two, laborers see this season. Laborers see this season. Laborers see this season. John 4 verse 35, NKJV. John 4 verse 35. Do you not say, John 4 verse 35, there are still four months. This is Jesus speaking here. He says, do you not say there are still four months and then comes, can we go to verse 34? Quickly. Verse 34. Jesus said to them, I told you to do the will of him who sent me out of any work. Okay, verse 35. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? It's a question. So it was like, you know, the disciples around him, they were like, we still have four months to go. We still have four months before the harvest. We still have four more. At least we still have time. If we sleep, you know, tomorrow we sleep again, drink Gary. You know, ask, but master, there is still time. Do you not say there are still four months? You see, I'm still a student. I need to, I need to graduate first before I do what God has asked me to do. There's still, there's still some months. Ah, after all, I'm seeing my 100 level. I have 200, I have 300. I have 400 level to go. I still have time now. I still have time. You are the owner of your time. Amen. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, look at this. Lift up your eyes. Are your eyes not lifted when you're not sleeping? Are your eyes not lifted normally when you're not sleeping? But, you know, your eyes can be open, but they are not lifted to see. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the field, for they are already white. For harvest. You know, we hear this statement a lot. I want to grow. I want to be like you when I grow. When are you growing? Maya, you, you're my role model. I want to be like you when I grow old. But you just celebrated your last birthday, so you added one year to your years. So when are you going to grow to become or to be becoming? Ma, you don't understand. I'm just a young person. And the next question is, how young is this young? Because there is no age limit to laboring. You see, while we decree scriptures, which is scriptural, to say with long life I have satisfied you and shown forth my salvation, can I tell you the truth as bitter as it may sound? We do not know the specific years. You do not know. I do not know the specific year when the master will call for me. So, in other words, there is nothing like you don't. Ma, I, I want to be like you when I grow. There is no room. He was saying, "Do you not say there are still four? There is no room for procrastination because listen. Do you know that the field that God has given you has given to ten more persons or hundreds? Oh, it's not only you that he gave the, that field. It's not only you. That dream that you're having, somebody is having it in his or her room. God will not be waiting for you to, to come to the realization of the dream. 
He will not be waiting for you. He will not say, oh, I have appointed. You are among the 72 that are appointed. Eh, if you are not there, two by two. If you are not part of these two, then somebody, he, he does not, he cannot be waiting for you. He's not, he's not waiting. So if somebody else is fulfilling the field on the field, laboring, he will crown that person and leave you behind. So when you say, eh, I want to be like you when you grow up, Every time you add one year to your age, you are telling yourself that you need to present yourself every day to be useful. So while you celebrate your birthday, you need to begin to celebrate how useful you have been all these years. How much have you been useful as a laborer in that field that God has given you? How have you really been useful? By the time when you are eating the cake, you are about to drop one chunk. One piece, ask yourself, how useful have I really become? Because many of the times when you're celebrating your birth, a lot of people have gotten so excited that they do not know that they need to grow to become laborers. They need to grow to fulfill the mandate God has given to them. And before you know it, you are to your 30s. Before you know it, you're in your 40s. And you're like, what did I do with all this time? Somebody asked me a question two months ago. You know, in a few years' time, I'm going to be 40. Very few. Don't come back here. Don't try to be calculating. Be here. Amen. Very few. Very few years. I'm going to be 40. And you know, somebody, I asked some, I was, me and a friend were having a conversation, my friend in Canada. And we were chatting. I was, she, I was like, I can't wait to, I, I don't know the feel, what it looks like, what it feels like to be 40. And she was like, she now said she clocked 40, I think this last year. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know. Ah, uh -uh. when you clocked 40, what did it feel like? I am looking forward to it by the special grace of God. And she said, I wish I didn't, I didn't get to, or I wish I, I had done better before getting to 40. And I said, wow. So how did you feel on that day? She said she, did, she felt empty. She felt dissatisfied. You see, not all of us have, we have the opportunity to have foolish experiences. But when you meet someone that can tell you, be, 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 be bold to confide in you about the foolish things he or she has done, you should be able to be wise to learn from such person. And so I realized that I need to be very, so I needed to, I needed to be more intentional about my few years. Because you don't have time. If you are in your early 20s, utilize your 20s. I wish that I was more self-motivated before I got married. But then, it cannot end in wishes. It has to be backed up by actions. So in other words, when, whatever age you are in, even if you are a teenager, there are teenagers who are, my God, when I was in school, university, you know, I thought I was very young and all of that, but I met a teenager, 18, 17 years. At that point in time, I was Thinking, you know, there's some people that will walk when you see their face. It will be so thick, you think they are in their 30s. When you have to ask their age, you'll be amazed at their age. And they are not lying. That's why I say, she's a lie, she's a lie. Ah, she's not old. Be deceiving yourself. And when she told me, she said, 18 years, I'm like, what? And you are doing this, this, this exploit in this great magnitude. I was like, Wow. Oh, this one, I say, you are a student, you are this, you are that. Listen, there are students who are shaking the world. Stop waiting to be like someone when you grow old. You are already too old to develop your dreams. There is season that is upon us and you need to see, just like we read in the scripture, the harvest. Can't you see that the harvest, the field is already white? You say four months, but there is no four months. It's already white for harvest. There is no other extra month. This is the season of harvest. It is already white. Can't you see? So laborers see the season. Oh, no wonder. In Matthew 9 verse 36, it says, but when he saw the multitudes, Jesus, Matthew 9 verse 36, when he saw, sight is a great requirement to labor. Sight is required for its effective laboring. In fact, if you don't see, you cannot have, you can even know your field. How much more? Sight is not just your eyes 
open your eyes. Oh, I don't know. You, who knows about these eyes? People are sleeping. They call them half past eye. Eh? Their eyes are not fully closed. Do you have that eyes? I had it too. Oh. I don't know if I still have it. I need to ask my husband. But they used to call me half past eyes when I was much younger. It's not that kind of eyes. It's not half past. It's not even full past. Because you can, you can be awake with your eyes open, but you're not seeing nothing. So it's talking about more of the mind. You need to know your heart that the field is already white for you to go in there and walk. For you to go in there and pull. For you to go in there and be pruned. For you to go in there and weed. For you to go in there and water. You need to know when your field is white. He saw, but when he saw, he did not move until he saw. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. So he had to see to be moved. Sight triggers movement. Sight triggers intercession. Sight triggers action. If you don't see, you will not move. Sight triggers movement. You become a mobile pillar. You become a salt that you were created to be. You become a mobile pillar. You become a movement. You become a force. You become a system when you can see. When you wake up, you are seeing, ah, God, I see women on wheels. I see women who can dominate territories. I see an army that is rising. I see generals that have retired and a new set of army have to take up the place. You need to see to pray. Until you see, you can pray. There is a way you pray when you see. <laughs> there is a way you pray. Sleep will not catch you. you when, when I was thinking of this program, when I sleep, it's like I all my dreams. I can't even sleep for long. The next thing I'm awake, I'm praying. I'm praying. Because when you see, there is... The body bearers see. You need to see. When you see that in Uniben, the banner of the gospel has to be lifted and has gone down for a long time, you will wake up. It won't be an academic thing. You will know that beyond just reading, you need to read the volumes of Revelation so you can impart your word. When you see there is a way you walk, when you see there is a how you eat, you don't eat your future now. When you see, you will understand that you don't need to have those human heads now because there is a future that awaits you. On my bed there, and I say it without any form of pride, with a form of humility. This is the first birthday I've had in years that the kind of money that entered my account, I haven't seen it, my account. And I was giving a check and I told my sister, I said, this, I can't eat this future now, I'll give it out. You know, there's a kind of money you will have in your bank, it will make you have a break on time. There is a kind of money you will have in your account, you would think that you have become that GO. You will jet out so fast. So it is better you give it away so you can see more. Please help me celebrate my friend, Pastor Lajri Ray. Help me celebrate Mr. Abel Jumo in the house. Hallelujah. So laborers have said, when you can see, you won't eat your future now. I have said it in many places I go to minister. There was a time in my life where I couldn't afford human hair. Enjoy the phase you are in. It's only a season. Wear the trips collection with pride, with pride, knowing that for now there is a burden upon you to, to take up gates in your city. I had the check, I gave it all out because I know that if I, if I should keep that money in my account, they wanted me to get one kind of, I like, if I should get this fronter, I may not see my front. (laughs) 
what are you seeing when you see that there is no four months the field is already white there is a how you act there is a how you move there is a how you behave there are sleepless nights you will have you will not snooze the alarm you will wake up the bed even though it's comfortable you won't feel any comfort because there is something you are seeing People celebrate all the glory and you want to tap. But can I tell you something? Why you may sow seed of money, there is a seed of sight you need to see. Even when Abraham was rich and rich enough in his flaws, God said, can you see the land I'm giving from where you are? Because while you are in this level, there are more levels in front. Don't take a break so soon, students. Don't take a break so soon, ladies. Don't take a break so soon, men. It is not the time to buy. You are the CEO. You just, you just hit one profit. It's not the time to buy the girl iPhone 14 Pro Max. Who is the girl? <laughs> Guys, can I be real? Yeah. Be buying ladies at time. They don't have time for you. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not saying it's bad to buy at time. So that you don't, you don't go sending your baby a message and say, Mama said, you see no air time. I didn't say that to oh. uh -huh. So that you don't go under the umbrella. You know you're already stingy. You want to enter that shield. <laughs> Amen. So you need to see. You need to see. Number three, laborers are men and women full of mercy. Matthew 14, verse 14. Quickly, it says that when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick compassion activates intercession and i tell you the truth if you're not compassionate you can't command the supernatural you have to have mercy on people to be able to intercede for them if you don't feel passionate about people if you don't have a passion if you don't feel merciful for people maybe you are more of a judge than one who is full of mercy you can't intercede you see someone you know, um, you, see, you see, maybe you see your colleague or, or, or a lady out there, you know, probably she just came back from one place or even saw her standing on one road. I don't want to mention some of these roads, it's streets we have in Benin City. And like, I saw, and you go to finish her name, her middle name, her future, everything in your hostel or in your office. And forget that if you could only have taken this energy to go on your knees for this person. Because you see, we're talking about more laborers. If, you, if we need to have more laborers in this vineyard, we need to have more compassion. We need to have more mercy. As a church, when people come in and they, 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 there's a how they look. Because I tell you, church is for the unchurched. Church is for people that need. Church is for, church is not, the, the, the God, Jesus did not just come for the saints, but he came for sinners. And can I tell you the truth? If you have to drive away people around you because of your judgment, because of how you judge people, how do we then fulfill the mandate of the Great Commission? People wondered when Jesus sat with a Samaritan woman and they were wondering. Jesus sat with some kind of people that nowadays if people see you sit, even you cannot sit with them because you will be judged. You will even judge them, not even you being judged. Can we minimize cuts and go to the throne room to draw mercy for people? And number four, laborers, I'll run down. Okay, let me just quickly take this one. Laborers are men and women who understand focus. Luke 10, verse 3 to 4. Quickly, go your way, listen carefully. I am sending you out like lambs among folks. Go your way. The word is go your way. Go your way. Don't enter too many ways. Go your way. Be focused. When you mind your business, your business minds you. Be focused. Many of you are doing things that you are not meant to do. Either because other people are doing it, not because you need to do it. Focus on your lane. Focus on it. When we started the Windows Ministry, people told us, you are doing nonsense. You are being jobless. You and your wife, we stayed on it because we heard. We saw. When you hear, when you see, stay on your lane. It's just a matter of time. Consistency brings productive results. Go your way. Behold. I send you out as lambs among wolves. And my last point, laborers understand that harvest exposes them to more enemies. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. 
Have you ever wondered why when you plant a crop or you, when you plant seeds in a farm, there are usually not many insects. But when the crops begin to sprout, there will be too many farm insects, crotches, different kinds of farm bugs trying to eat up the crop. You may have enemies when you want to sow, just like Joseph and his siblings. When you want to tell them, you tell them about your seed, you tell them about your dream. You may likely have a few enemies, but listen, when the Lord begins to announce you, when there is the harvest, when there is a sprouting up, when your crops begin to yield, trust me, you will have more enemies. <laughs> more enemies. You will become a lamb amongst wolves. So can I tell you something? Accommodate the persecution. You need to know that your harvest will expose you to enemies. I have fought more warfare being there as a public figure than when I was not a public figure. I have faced many battles when I, was, when I became this loud than when I was silent. When I was silent, I didn't have anybody. And I tell you the truth, especially in this our field ministry, you have very few friends. So, your, the harvest will expose you to a lot of enemies. You will see people who will scream and hail you, but if you go beyond what they are greeting, how they greet you, your heart is full and wishing, I wish she wasn't there. I wish he wasn't there. When windows begin, began to become loud, when I began to do refresh and all of that, when I shared it as a seed, it wasn't any big deal. But when it became loud, we had to have more team of intercessors. Because harvests will expose you to enemies. No wonder when David was about to go to war, to war with the Philistine called Goliath, Saul was like a friend, a mentor, a big brother. He said, ah, we give you this, I'll give you... Um, David said, these things are too heavy. There's no need to have these things. I will just go with my five stones, you know, a bag and all of that. So I was like, ah, no, no. You know, of course, David had already asked the condition. What will it be for the man who kills this Philistine that has come to be tormenting our people? And so he was told he will become the king. He will marry King Saul's wife and all of that. So he was good to go. And Saul was a friend at that time. But when he won the war, when he conquered Goliath, it is only normal. And I tell you, every time I read through the scripture, I'll say, it's because of how the women sang. David killed 10,000, Saul killed 10,000. Amen. It wasn't really what they sang. Listen, when there is already a seed in your heart, people's praise will either bury it or resurrect it more. So it really wasn't the word he sang. Saul had already heard the news. He was shaking. It is not easy to anoint someone and the person exceeds you. You can say, hey, they can pray for you. I want you to be greater. But when, it is when the greatness is revealed that you will know if they will still be your friends or wolves. The women began to sing. And it was only normal for such celebration to happen. For goodness sake, there were people who looked like they could conquer the Philistine Goliath. But there was a David who didn't look like it. Who his siblings wanted to chase back. But David stood and said, I will go. When he didn't look like it, he wasn't qualified. He said, I will go. And he went. It was normal for them to see such a size. And after becoming this victorious, who wouldn't praise a man like David? And they started carrying him. I can imagine them carrying him on, his on their shoulders. And you know women can be very loud. They will compose spontaneously. And they were singing, Hey, David slain 10,000. King Saul wanted they even got close to his palace. They were still singing. And the king was bitter. That was when enmity came about. You will need to learn how to rule in the midst of wolves. You will need to learn how to rule in the midst of enemies. Have you ever wondered until Judas became suicidal, he betrayed Jesus. Jesus knew that Judas was a betrayer. You will need to learn how to rule amongst persecution. Stop running away from it. I promise you, you will be attacked. I promise you that when you see that your field is white and you are willing to go in there, be ready. Because even Jesus came to his own and his own did not 
know him. He was rejected by mankind. If you like saying your heart, I wasn't part of it. Amen. Uh, you know. Hallelujah. And lastly, the Lord of the harvest. You can never harvest until you know the Lord. You cannot harvest until there is the Lord. He says, and pray to the Lord of the harvest. And pray to the Lord of the harvest. So there cannot be an effective harvest without coming to the Lord. There cannot be an effective harvest because there is the Lord of the harvest. There is someone who owns what you are going to own. There is somebody who owns. There is somebody who has been on that field that you are about to go into. So you will need to come to him every day for help. You will need to come to him and surrender when you see wolves. You will need to position yourself as lamb. He said, he said, anyway, no time. You will need to position yourself as lamb where you are quiet. He said, the Lord at every hour will give you the right words to say. At the hour, he will give you the right words to speak. But you must stay as lamb. Because you see, sheep know their government. Sheep know the owner of the harvest. Pray to the Lord of the harvest. There is someone who owns the harvest. You need to go back to him and ask him, how do you harvest? Until you go back, you may be frustrated. But every time you go and you draw from him, you are sure to have a bountiful harvest. Can you just bring the Holy Ghost in a few seconds? Salabalaban. Sin and a mind, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank Him. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We bless your name. We give you all the glory. We exalt you. We thank you for all that you will do today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come on, can you just wave your hands and just say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, celebrate God. Celebrate God. Come on, celebrate God. And I said, celebrate G-O-D, God. Hallelujah. Still in this standing posture. Still in this standing posture. To bring us further to the next session. Without wasting much time to read her profile. We already, done, we already did that before I came up. But just to say one or two things. This is the second time she's ministering in We Are More Ladies Conference. She ministered in 2019. Can you remember? If you were there, make a shout. Yes. She ministered in 2019. Then we used the, um, the church auditorium, 2019. And yet she's again for the second time. And we are more ladies conference 2023. She's my friend. She's the pastor, the campus pastor of Celebration Church International. Ikeja, where she co-pastors with Pastor Erin. She's a mother, an author, a filmmaker, the Lord's storyteller. With Jesus joy in your heart, put your hands together. Come on, make it louder. Make it louder. Make it louder. Come on, you can do better until she gets here. Make it louder. Make it louder. Make it louder. Louder, 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 louder. Louder, 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 louder. To receive this vessel. To receive this vessel. 
the blessing of Pastor Lajuri Red. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. This is why we are still standing. Help me celebrate my dear friend. I'm many people's friends, but not many people are my friends. But Pastor Amelie is my friend. Help me celebrate her. And of course, her better half. The set man over voltage and the windows. Pastor Ohi Sojekere. Surely you can do better. I love you both so much. I speak on behalf of my husband and myself. We love you so much. Please be seated. Glory be to God. I just want to celebrate all the men and women of God in the house today. Now, wow. So wait, you only celebrate your pastors, but not other pastors. Ah. And then I met Minister Abe when I was coming in. So please celebrate her. I bring you love from the love of my life. How do you know it's not Jesus I want to say? <laughs> from the love of my life, my boyfriend of how many years now? Ha! Huh. Anyway, my boyfriend since 2011. My crush since 2008. <laughs> I crushed on that guy for a long time. <laughs> My husband since 2014. My pastor since 2008, Pastor Apostle Emmanuel Aaron. Our daughters and our church family, glory be to God. How y'all doing today? I'm enjoying being in so much, I have to keep reminding myself that I came to preach and not to sleep and eat. You guys have been taking care of me, so I feel like I should carry the entire protocol and care team to my house, just so they can be taking care of me. I've eaten so many things, I've not eaten in a long time. Thank you guys so much for the love. Glory be to God. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment? Hmm. Then some tico shut at a battle emotion in bed. Zay a better than see so toko sha. I'm not a singer, but it's a simple song. I like you to just listen to as we pray in the Holy Ghost. And oh, says so so tom shut on a matea. Lemon a kessu so. The Lord has touched my eyes to see. Where to go and what to do. He touched my eyes to see. The Lord has touched my ears to hear his voice behind me. He's touched my ears to hear. Jesus lead me. And I will follow you. Lead me and I will go. Father, lead me. And I will follow you. Jesus, lead me. Make that your heart cry this morning. And I will follow you. i 
Jesus, lead me to the Lead me and I will follow you. Right now by your spirit While on your seats, just pray in tongues loud and fast and talk to Jesus. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray like the Word of God can change your life. Pray like one word from God can redirect your destiny. He that lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally. He something to pele take a son to love it here. Right now, by your spirit. Network. But we who are led by your word are always aligned. We always know where to go. We always know what to do. We always know who to do it with. And we always know who we are. Let your word take us from where we are today to where we ought to be in your will. And let's be forever changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory be to God. Are you ready this morning? Glory to God. You see, they invited me again because the last time I came, I didn't take up too so much time. So I'm hoping that I will do the same today. 
Because they say pastors that take up too much time, they don't invite them again. But here I am for the second time at We Are More Ladies Conference. A couple of things the Lord asked me to share with you. They are very simple points, but it will change your life forever. Number one is harvest is plenty. Not your neighbor and say the harvest is plenty. In Matthew chapter 9 from verse 36, the Bible says that Jesus saw the crowds and he was moved with compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without shepherd. Does that look promising to you? If you see people moving about aimlessly like sheep without shepherd, what do you say? This country is finished. People are jobless. They don't have hope. But the Bible says that where other people were seeing people like sheep without shepherd, Jesus saw harvest. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus saw harvest. Glory be to God. You see, the average person would have said, people are so jobless, I'm tired of the world, there's too much sin. But you see, for a shepherd, that was what? Harvest. If you happen to have a friend who is a psychiatrist, or a psychologist, and the friend goes to work one day and says, I'm not going back to that office again. And you say, why? You say, oh, there are too many mad people. What will you make of that person? It won't make sense because his job is to go to wear what? So for the average person, it's a problem. But for the man in Christ who has been sent, it is called what? Should I say it again? For the average person, some things might look like a problem. Have you seen the things that they are showing on TV nowadays? I told my children, I said, some shows you guys should not watch. Some shows are having two moms and two dads. Peppa Pig. So whenever they see Peppa Pig, they said, no, mommy said we shouldn't watch that. There are some languages that are being used now before. Any man that pursues a young child is called a what? Better what? But now they have a new term for it. Minor attracted persons. Rebrand your Miami. And so, while it makes sense to complain, one thing we must realize is that in the world, darkness should not shock light. Do you understand? Because the reason why God sends you as light is because there is what? Uh-huh. So when Jesus sees people as sheep with a shepherd, he doesn't say all oh, is lost, it's all over. He says the harvest is plenty. So if there are things that are looking like problems to you, whether in an industry that God has called you to, or you realize that so many people lack home training in their families, or their children that are out of school, or their ladies that need grooming, and being raised, and being taught, or it's the entertainment industry, when you see problems, while the average man might see problems, the man in Christ is what? Can you hear me this morning? The harvest is plentiful. Not your neighbor and say the harvest is plentiful. You see, three women wanted to start a business, so they went to a business coach. They said, what to start a business for? Selling soft drinks. And they asked, the coach asked them, okay, so what's the most important thing when you want to start this business? And one person said, prime location. You know, let's just do it in front of Airport Road, where rich people pass. We'll be able to sell more. Another person said, no, 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 it's not about the location. It's about the materials. What materials are you using to make your Zobo? What materials are you using to make your soft drink? Another person said, it's not about that. It's about the training. And the business coach told them something. He said, the most important thing is testy customers. Is what? So when you see a problem, especially a problem that could be a kingdom problem, it's an opportunity for harvest. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You see, things are so bad now. One of the things I do research for messages is I go on social media. People say it's because I like social media. It's true. But I also go there for research so I can teach you things. 
And things are so bad in some schools now in the U.S. I saw now one comment section. A woman said, I'm an atheist, but I'm going to send my children to Christian school. Because now in some schools in the U.S., you have cages for children that identify as what? Cats. So the teacher will ask a question. And they will raise up their hand and say, Meow. Because that's how the, the child was. I, that's, those are some things you can't try in Nigerian school. <laughs> the teacher will slap. <laughs> you know, I went to FGTC Uboro. As I was coming, I passed. I still remember the way I felt when I used to go to school. Any bad behavior you have, you start adjusting it before you get there. So every time there are issues or challenges, I think that many of us think that the evil in the world shocks God. That God is just like, eh? Oh my God, so much evil. Oh my God, so much darkness. But the Bible says that the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. It's high time you stop running away from darkness. Because darkness is where the harvest is. It's high time you stop running away from darkness. Because darkness is what? That's where the harvest is. Praise the Lord. I've never seen a well running away. Say, why are you running? Say, Pastor Lajo, please borrow me your sneakers. This Pastor Amwali's heels, I can't use it. Why are you running? Say, there are too many thirsty people. No. While people were running away from the Samaritans, Jesus the living water went and sat at the well and waited for the Samaritan woman. No matter the challenges in the world today, you have the answer. You have the answer. You have the answer. God is not shocked. God is not scratching his head, writing, dear God, what can I do? He has sent you ahead of time. He has sent you ahead of time. You know, the devil thought he was planning something when he was using, is it Haman or Naaman? In Esther's time, which one is it? Haman. Mm -hmm. He thought he was planning something. Haman said, I'm going to destroy all the Jews. I'm going to deal with them. Let's choose a particular day. They will all die. They didn't know that before Haman started his plan, God had removed Vashti and put Esther. So when you find yourself in a situation, it might come as a surprise to you, but it's not a surprise to God. He has arranged Esther. Esther didn't even, she thought she was just going there to do fine girl. But her uncle told her, he said, how do you know that God has brought you here for such? Hey, Lama Tayabate. You are here for such a time as this. You are here for such a time as this. You are not there by accident. You are there for, it might look like, they selected you based on your qualification. Grace brought you. Praise the name of Jesus. The second thing that we, I want to teach you today is that the laborers are few. Glory be to God. The laborers are few. My husband used to say, Stop asking God to send laborers when you yourself have not gone. You see, people that Jesus was asking to send laborers into the vineyard. Sorry, it's not be asking I don't to sweat at home. Glory be to God. The people that Jesus was asking to send laborers into the vineyard, where were they? Were they in the vineyard already? They're already working. Now some of us are sleeping in our house. Jesus, send laborers. So many are dying. Many are perishing. Whatever I am now, it is by your grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Benny, you are supposed to be on the field. You see, you, see, so, you see, some of you like to pray for prayers that you don't plan to answer. Say, ah, the rate of, I don't want 
anything bad about Benin because I know Benin people are very strong. The rate of XYZ in Benin is so bad. Is there any person who really wants to call the name of some streets? So bad. God, I wish there were people. What's wrong with your hand? So if we are going to make progress for the kingdom, we must rise up and be what? Counted. Glory be to God. The people that Jesus asked to pray for laborers, they were already laborers themselves. You need to stop assuming that the entire purpose of your life. You know, I had some friends when I was in FGTC, and their whole life was spent in the ball. They were born in UDSH. They went to primary school in UDSS. From UDSS, they went to FGTC. From FGTC, do you know where they went to? Of course. Uniben. From Uniben, they did NYSC where? In UBTH. They even some, they now married a fellow doctor in what? And then they gave birth to a child that was born in where? Then the child went to primary school in where? Continuous. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's so cool. Like, because Bini is a lovely place to live. It is. Since I came here, I've slept in sleep. I didn't sleep in Lagos. And for some people, there's nothing wrong. If you never live beneath, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a jungle out there. But when you assume that the purpose of your life is to go to primary school, then secondary school, then join NYSC, you meet one fine boy, then you marry, then you have children, then you raise the children, then you die. You have missed the entire purpose of life. Laborers are called to work. So if Jesus himself is saying the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few, he shouldn't have to say it twice for you to say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Praise the name of Jesus. The second thing that laborers are few is that there will always be room for laborers in the kingdom. What did I say? Oh, you sound like you are sleeping. What did I say? I want to say this thing very clearly. What God is doing through the hands of your neighbor will not affect what he wants to do through your hands. Should I say it again? You know, God is not so broke. It's not like a man that doesn't have money and he has 30 children. So this one's will eat today. This one will not eat tomorrow. These ones will go to school. These ones, they will not go to school. They will sell pepper. God has enough for all his children. He has enough grace for all his children. He has enough assignments for all his children. Praise the name of Jesus. And so one thing we must learn as co-laborers is to let go of strife and competition. Some of you can pray for five hours. I'm coming for you. But you can't have a conversation with someone for five minutes without fighting. You can read the Bible for 10 hours. You will understand what every text message they send you. You will misunderstand. Some of you don't know how to jump, but you can jump into conclusion. Many of us don't know how to read. You know, one of the simplest things and most important things a believer must know how to do is to relate with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are fighting with your unit head, yeah. You must know it. What was it about Jesus? See the way people used to approach him. People that work with Jesus, they must have been shocked. Come to work today. You just see one woman. Using her hair. To be washing his feet. If some of you were Jesus... The way you will even be floating. I don't want to take your feet. Your leg will not touch the ground. You come to Jesus, you, you will come to work the next day. You see children gathered around him. On another day, you come to work, you look up. Where they are, like, just imagine this place that Unibank gave us now. Somebody open. <laughs> For all that is not cheap. Open roof, bring people. 
someone down that you want him to be healed. Eh? Even if I heal him by miracle, which miracle would they use to repair the roof? But Jesus was an approachable person. Glory be to God. So if we're going to achieve what we need to achieve as the body of Christ, we must walk together. You know, the devil tries to lie to us. Have you ever heard people say there are too many churches? Say every street, one church. Every street, one church. Please, how many bear parlors are opening every day in this country? What of school? Or as I'm talking to you now, your streets, there are two schools. True or true? Mm -hmm. Say too many, too many Christian creators. Please, how many... Google on your phone. Okay, don't Google it. How many porn sites exist? Say, ah, you just got married yesterday. You and your husband are already doing YouTube. How to be a Christian couple. Eh? Uh-huh. Eh? Uh-huh. When people who don't even believe the gospel. Have you, ever, have you seen self-acclaimed marriage counselors? That don't know jack about marriage. They don't know Jack. Never been married. Don't know what the Bible says about marriage. It gets worse. They don't know what common sense. Yet they are counselors. And do you know the shocking thing? They have followers. They have subscribers. It's a lie of the devil that we are doing too much. We've not started. We've what? We have not started. We don't have enough time to be fighting one another. So, why do you open channel? This song is not a, it's not a worship song. It's a this one song. This is a... Why are Christians singing love songs? I don't understand. So, we should leave love to the world. Who is, is it not God that is love? Who created marriage? Who created sex? Who created romance? So why will we leave it to the world to be singing for us? Say, why are they doing Christian film? I don't understand. I'm so confused right now. We are not to 